Hi guys, hi, nice to meet you. How are you? If you don't know me yet, hi, I'm Nisha and I am an international student. I am from Poland, but I study at Edgehill University. I just finished my first year studying musical theater and I'm gonna be going to my second year and that's just crazy. Anyways, today I'm gonna spill all the tea about being an international student and funny enough, it's not only for those who are one of us. If you are not, you might also find this video useful for either your future long-term travel or something like that or just to understand us a little bit more. Being an international student is just not not easy, okay? Also, this year I'm doing a university one-on-one -on -one guide where I guide you through basically everything from like what to bring what you should know through international student tips and other tips and tricks up to like budgeting and cooking and basically like everything you might need to know so make sure to subscribe so that you won't miss a thing if you're an international student or you're about to be an international student you're probably terrified about just the thought of packing everything and flying all the way out there but don't worry, I'm here to calm you down and tell you that it's probably going to be harder than you think. But you'll be fine. Bruh. I will tell you some tips on how to fly out there, how to pack your stuff, how to meet people and how to deal with all of the adult shit that no one wants to talk about. Bear in mind that I can only speak about my experience and about how it looked for me and also I don't really know the rules in different countries so some of the tips, especially when I talk about like adulting papers, might be only for like England but it might still be just a little reminder of what you should look into and what you should prepare wherever you're going. Also before I start I just wanted to say what this video is not about. This video is not a guide on how to find a school abroad or how to apply out there. My guide is on actually being an international student so if you want a video about how to get into the school abroad let me know leave a comment down below i will prepare one of these but for now let's just stick to how to prepare to be an international student anyways it will be a longest video because i have a lot to say so get yourself some tea or coffee or whatever you like to drink and maybe some snacks and let's sit down and, and talk okay the first thing you're probably asking yourself is how am I supposed to pack everything and fly all around there with like move my whole life just abroad? And here I come to tell you that I went to university and I moved country with just one suitcase and a backpack. And like, I'm not joking when I say this, I, I really did that. Obviously flying abroad, there are some like limits in packaging. I was also flying on my own, so I couldn't really handle a lot of packages as well. And I didn't want to pay fuckillion pounds for shipping all of the stuff that I had around. So I only just flew with one suitcase and one backpack. I just packed the most important things like clothes, shampoo, a bottle of Polish vodka, <laughs> and some food for the first day, you know, like before I even do the shopping. So basically I flew with just like one suitcase and one backpack and then all of the things I needed I just bought out there and you may think that it's gonna take more money than shipping everything but actually it's not because you know there's always a risk that if you ship something it's gonna break and stuff and I think it's still more expensive especially that I didn't buy like a lot of things but just like the essentials that I needed and honestly for the whole year I, I haven't even bought a cup because I've been just drinking from a mug the whole year so I've literally just bought like essentials and whatever I actually needed to use for everyday living. But okay, yeah, what about bedding? How did you sleep the first night? I know, I know. So there are two ways. Either just take like a small blanket or like a small cushion, something that won't take as much of a space in your suitcase and just sleep on that for the first night and then go to the shop and buy bedding. Or what I did is I ordered a starter packet. There's a lot of different companies and sites online that you can find that ship like starter packages. Sometimes even universities have them. So check out on your university page if they offer something like that. So maybe you can order it. I think I used something called Uni Kit Out, something like that. And I could basically choose what I wanted in my starter package let me tell you this there's no point in getting those like stock packages that they give you an option to because there's a lot of stuff like you won't even need it just completing your own starter package is gonna cost you way 
less. You literally just have to order like things for the first day because then you can just go shopping and buy everything way cheaper than on those sites. So I remember I ordered like a package with like bedding, cutlery and like a singular thing of each, like a single mug, a single bowl, a single plate, just everything I needed for like the first day to just leave off anything. I think I paid around 100 pounds for this package, which is quite a lot if you think about it, but it's still less than traveling with it all. And it's still less than the big packages that they offer you to buy. It's pretty affordable anyways. Now, if you're living on campus and you don't really know how to order the package on the campus, you can always contact the university because I remember our university didn't let incoming students to order things before they move in and stuff, but I remember I emailed them and they just basically let me order it before I moved in. So you can always email your university or there's another way that I ended up doing which was finding friends before coming to uni. Nowadays when internet is like our life because we basically talk, work, date, you can even have a shrink online. Really, internet is like our life. It's really not that hard to find your university friends online. As dangerous as it sounds, it's really like our reality right now and meeting friends over internet before coming to university is really normal. All of the universities always have like Facebook pages and then you can find people from like your course, your accommodation or also internationals. I remember I did that before coming to uni. I was literally in my accommodation group chat a in course group chat and internationals group chat what we also did we had like zoom calls before meeting which were quite awkward at the beginning still pretty useful like you want to meet friends before coming there you're not gonna know anyone so maybe like reaching to people before going there might be pretty useful especially that you can always find help. I remember a lot of people really wanted to help me when I was coming to university. They were like, we can help you get from the airport, we can like pick you up or like the train station. So remember that package I told you about like a minute ago? So yeah, what I did, I asked my friend if I could order it on her name because she was coming to university before me. And then the first day I came to university, I met with her and picked up the package from her. Not only I had help, but also already made friends. Speaking of meeting new friends, don't be scared to reach out. Like people don't bite. I mean, unless they're like super drunk, but they shouldn't, but anyways, don't be afraid to make friends. And I know it's easier said than done, but Honestly, it's not like people are avoiding internationals. I mean, it wouldn't say anything good about these that do, right? In fact, people really like meeting internationals because they can talk about different cultures and, you know, basically the differences. It's, it's actually really exciting for them, just as it is for you. So get yourself out there, talk to people. You're probably scared about your language abilities. Hear me out. Okay, people will be laughing at your accent, okay? After all, it's different than how they speak and especially if you're going to England. I don't know what it is, but British people are like crazy over accents. So they laugh at accents, no matter if they're from UK or other parts of the world. But to that I say, laugh with them. It's not like they're trying to shame you or anything. They're laughing with you not at you. And if they're paying attention to your mistakes, it's probably not because they want to shame you again. It's just that they want you to know and like remember so that it doesn't happen in official situations or something. If someone is laughing at you for your language, you will know and, and just avoid those people because it's not really a useful friendship then. After all, you're going to university out there to learn or perfect the language, right? So go out there, don't hide, because if you're hiding, you're not gonna learn anything. Now, let's go to the packing part. You're probably wondering, how am I supposed to pack so many clothes in just one suitcase? If you're watching all of those back to university videos, everyone is like packing a whole shit ton of clothes. And then a year later, they make a video saying like, oh, I shouldn't bring so many clothes. A suitcase is enough. You're probably gonna end up going for a shopping spree anyways when you arrive. You can always buy new clothes later on in the year or just bring them when you go back home again. But anyways, to choose which clothes you should and should not bring, I have another tip for you, which is plan your outfits. It's easier to pack all of the things when you know how you're gonna wear them together instead of just packing anything and being like, oh, I wanna wear this, I wanna wear this. And then you open your wardrobe and you're like, 
I don't have any outfits to put from the clothes I brought. And also remember about different occasions that may appear, something that is very like smart and elegant. Maybe you already have an idea for your Halloween costume, you know, like just think about what you might actually need. And also remember about the weather. For the first term, you're probably gonna need more like sweaters and warm clothes. But then when you go back for Christmas, you can bring some of the summer clothes. Also what I mentioned in my video about what to bring to university, bring a lot of comfy clothes. More info about it in the video, so I'm gonna link it somewhere here. Oh, and also if you're going for like the whole year and you're not planning on going back home over like Christmas, you can either just balance the amount of warm and summer clothes or just like plan to buy things at university. Now, you can save some shiny coins on flying with just a backpack instead of suitcase. And I mean flying home when, when you fly for like Christmas or like Easter, you know. I mentioned in my video about what to bring to university about a big backpack and if you're an international student that's even more important. The backpack you're gonna bring is not only for shopping, for classes, it's for traveling. You're probably gonna be going home for just like a month, two tops, and you're still gonna have some stuff left in your home so there's really not a point in taking the whole suitcase back home and you can really save some shiny coins on that. As an international student in the UK, you probably are not eligible for a maintenance loan, so you really might have a use of those few shiny coins. Plan what you need to bring home and just use one backpack. Now what you're about to hear right now is pretty sad, but that's just the reality. You won't get any special treatment. Okay, university might let you like order things before coming to uni or like will give you space on campus to isolate. Or maybe they could even pay for your cab from the airport to campus. But that's about it. Honestly, as an international, I'm not even getting a place in halls on campus for my second year Bruh. just because I'm going to a second year and they just think that if I lived here for a year I can find a house which is right because I did so after being mad for a week that I didn't get a place on campus it's really not like you're getting any special treatment your tutors also will not really care that you're international when it comes to like marking your essays or anything they are aware of your language barriers they will only say something like i know you're an international and it's hard for you blah 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 but it's not like they're gonna mark you higher just because you're an international like after all it is your choice to go to university abroad and you have to meet the requirements and if you actually need like help with writing and stuff universities usually provide like academic resources but again this is something i said about in my last video as well they don't really offer proofreading and stuff. But if you need any help and you don't know how to do something, you can always email the international's office. Most universities should have an international's office. Honestly, I didn't know we had such an office until like my fourth day at uni, but that's really a huge help. Like, like whenever you're struggling with something, you don't know anything, you can just reach out to them and they will help you. Now, like I said, your tutors will not give you any special treatment about your essays and you might use some academic resources, but like I said, they don't offer proofreading. Get yourself Grammarly, and this is something I also mentioned in my last video, but literally that's like that's like a god's blessing your family might not even speak the language having grammarly is like a lifesaver after all you do have a bigger difficulty because this is not your first language that's not sponsored by the way but with grammarly you can basically get all of your like misspellings and punctuation done in like three seconds you can also always ask friends for help because like they won't leave you the little helpless international <laughs> Helpless. I'm slowly coming to an end, I promise. After scaring you a little, I'm gonna scare you even more. We're gonna talk about the adulting shit as the worst things possible, which is the paperwork. Now, I could make a whole other video on that because there's literally so much to say and how to deal with things. So if you want a video like that, let me know. But for now, I'm just gonna tell you about like basic things you need to remember about. And again, I can only speak in my experience about the papers that I need to get ready in the UK, which might be different for different countries. I might not be able to give you the full information on your country that you're going to, but what I'm gonna say here might give you an overview on what you should look into. The first thing is a student loan. And remember to apply early enough 
because honestly i've applied pretty late i was stressing so much that i'm not gonna get it also make sure you get at least one of the letters from student finance on your university address it might come in handy for the next thing you have to think about which is the bank account that's another thing to consider you do want a bank account in the country you're studying at especially if you're going to apply for jobs later on now you have to look into the banks if they offer bank accounts for international students because i know not all of them do but i applied for barclays account it might take a really long time to set up a bank account honestly that that's that's such a pain in the ass so you might also look into like online banks like monzo but basically why i needed the letter from student finance for my student bank account is i had to prove my address and because i was living on campus my fixed term agreement didn't work so the student finance letter came in really handy in this situation another thing is registering with a local gp I haven't done it yet, which I probably should. Yeah, I'm gonna do it that year. Basically, you might have a GP on campus, but you also might not. So once you get there, it's really useful to just check. Now, obviously, if you're going to, you know, another country, you do need to be legal out there. So probably before even going, you have to check if you need a visa or something like that. And another thing is you need to think about your right to work in the country which also might be your visa but for example for me i didn't need a visa but i needed a pre-settled status also in uk what employers are looking for is national insurance number you might get a job without it but then they might tell you like you don't have national insurance number we're not gonna pay you so just so you don't have a situation like that just get yourself a national insurance number also to apply for national insurance number you do need a bank account and basically the process of all of that is is just awful it's it's honestly such a pain in the ass but i believe in you you can do it and with that package you're probably gonna be set for now you're probably gonna have to look for like a house and stuff but that's later on those are like the most important things you should look into when you're going to leave abroad okay enough scaring but before i finish i want to tell you one more thing don't pressure yourself it's gonna take time it's gonna take time to settle in to find your people to open up i know this is not easy so give yourself time to figure things out and to simply just like get the most from your life journey and don't be scared to ask questions honestly i feel like i've been using my friends the whole year but right now i know i couldn't manage it all without them don't be scared to reach out to people because it's really hard to deal with everything yourself okay that will be it for this video thank you so much for watching i hope this video was any useful to you let me know if it was if you liked it like the video if you didn't like it i don't know dislike it do whatever let me know what other uni themed videos you would like to see and if you want more of international tips and tricks and how to be an international and what is the reality of it also let me know where you're going to university like i'm curious i want to know <laughs> make sure to subscribe so that you won't miss any of the university 101 videos and also if you have any more questions you can always message me on my instagram or facebook account and yeah, good luck with your journey and I will see you next week. Bye.